Hey everyone, I'm Brad Nelson. And I'm Todd Anderson. And you're watching the Versus series on StarCityGames.com. All right, so this weekend, the SCG Tour stops in Wooster, and we're going to be playing a little bit of Legacy action. Yeah, uh, I wish I was going. Kind of sad to say that I'm not. I don't get to play a lot of Legacy recently, and uh, I just miss casting Brainstorm so it, much. It, it is a lot of fun. Uh, I will be uh, also not going because I'm bad at the format. Uh, I was decent at it, but now I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for us also, uh, Worcester is just a, a huge drive. It's like 13 hours or something, and, and that kind of endurance, uh, I, I can't even imagine driving that far. Too far. Again. Way too far. I've done it before. Uh, we have done it. It's, it's, I've done Drive it once. to Orlando like once. And yeah. But it's, it's anyway, it still means that even though we're not going, we get to play Legacy on the Versus series for the week. And today I'm going to be playing Sneak and Show with a little bit of a twist with the Omniscience Cunning Wish. It's kind of like just the package of Omnitel and Show and Tell all merged in just one. Take it, just show it together. Yeah. And it ended up making the top eight uh, of a legacy GP a few weeks back, which is enough for me to justify, you know, shoving show and tell down your throat for the weekend. Oh yeah. I mean, if, if, if Brad liked doing anything, like he's just cast show and tell and being like, ha ha, hope, hope I win. <laughs> Turn two and three gristle brands have won me a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sure. Uh, all right. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think that deck looks really cool. It's definitely an interesting take on the archetype and uh, it should be interesting to see how this matchup plays out. Uh, I'm going to be playing Jerry Thompson's Grixis Control deck, uh, where he made top 16 at Grand Prix Columbus a few weeks back as well. We talked about this deck a little bit before the tournament because I played Noah Walker's uh, Grixis Delver deck in one of the classics leading up to the event. And if I ended up going to that event, I was going to play something like this, but I ended up not. And Jerry X actually lost playing for top eight to yeah, Jarvis U. Which was brutal. Impressive, because Jarvis does so well in this format. Yeah, I mean, he, he is a, a, a top-tier lands pilot uh, with a Grand Prix win under his belt uh, last year, I believe. And the, the lands deck is, is generally going to be favored against any sort of Brainstorm deck that's not a combo deck. Yeah. And it's even favored against some versions of combo decks, just because of, of how well some of the utility lands interact with the opponent. But it always has the back door of, like, turn two, make a 20-20 off of uh, Dark Depths and, and, and Exploration uh, and, uh, exploration and, and uh, the found or whatever the land's called, Thespian Stage. Yeah. Sorry. But uh, this Grixis deck is uh, built to just generate a lot of card advantage. It plays both Jason Mind Sculptor and Painful Truths. Uh, Painful Truths, not a card we've seen a ton of in Legacy. A lot of people tried to, you know, play it in Esper variants and now Grixis variants uh, since it was printed and we lost Treasure Cruise and we lost Dig Through Time. And it fills the role quite well, but against a lot of the more aggressive Delver variants in the format, it's a little risky. Yeah. It was interesting to see Jerry play that deck when he's been so, uh, like, in love with Shardless yeah. Sultai, when this deck is kind of just like a Shardless Sultai deck. Yeah, but the, the draw of uh, Young Pyromancer with Cabal Therapy is so strong against, and against decks. All, all decks, really. Yeah. I mean, the the one-two punch, if you if you can, so, like, go... Turn one, uh, Jitaxian Probe, Cabal Therapy. Yeah. And then later in the game, you just usually know one of the cards still left mm -hmm. in their hand. And then you go Pyromancer, make a token, sacrifice it, and get another token back so it's virtually free. Yeah, it, it is pretty disgusting. But anyway, that's the matchup. I'm going to be trying to get my cards into play as soon as possible before Todd rips apart my hand. And uh, he is going to try to rip apart my hand and counter my couple spells. Full disclosure... Uh, I would like there to be a lot of hidden information in this particular video just because of how important it is for Cabal Therapy because the more Brad talks about his hand uh, or lines of play, he's just going to give off the vibes of certain cards in his hand that I'm going to be able to take with Cabal Therapy, and I want to show everybody how good I am with Cabal Therapy. Okay. Deal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 7-11's game. Uh, if you roll a 7, you win. If you roll an 11, you lose. If someone rolls a 7 while the other rolls 11, the person that rolled 11 gets to be on the plate every game. Oh, I want it so bad. I do not want roll you to seven. have it. Eight again. Rats. No. Ah, okay. I Dead. Play. <laughs> All right. You good? What's your hand like? You All first. Right. 
All right, well, my hand is pretty good. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna crack the Scalding Tarn to cast a Preordain, and hopefully if we find a threat, we can cast the Show and Tell. Come on, man. <laughs> now he's just gonna be baiting me. Okay, all right, this is gonna be a fun little sub game. All right, we're gonna have fun today. My hand, my hand is definitely keepable. We have a lot of stuff to do in the early game. Uh, decks like this tend to be, uh, I guess, kind of flooded with cantrip spells like Ponder and Brainstorm. So uh, we're gonna try to leverage those into real threats while also building towards a big Delph spell. All right. I'm gonna crack this and get an island. Protect against turn one wasteland. All right. Preordain. Whoop. Whoop. All right. Well, both of these are going to the bottom. Doesn't it feel good to scribe before you draw? Oh, it's so good. See your visions. Oh, perfect draw. Worst. Your turn. All right. So. I'm not sure if I need to dig for a Force of Will or not right now. The odds of him playing a turn two show and tell is not super high, um, but it is certainly possible. He has a number of two mana lands as well as Lotus Petal. And, you know, there is the possibility that he even just jams a turn two show and tell even with nothing in hand if he has a backup to play on turn three or, you know, later down the line if he finds a big threat. And that kind of forces my hand to, to cast uh, a Force of Will if I have one. So... Here I can lead with a Deathrite Shaman, or I can potentially just cast a Ponder and maybe even a Jataxian Probe to f dig for Force of Will. A lot of the games of Legacy are decided within the first like three or four turns, so uh, if I saw him start with this opener, I would probably put him on some sort of show-and-tell deck, so I think it is imperative that I Ponder. All right. All right, three cards that don't really do much. The Brainstorm's fine, but I already have one, and I kind of want to find something better, so. Uh, I will not cast a Probe if I draw one, so I will pass. All right. Lotus Petal. Results. Show and tell. Rats. <laughs> uh, yeah, Results. Actually, I should probably put it in a land and... Yeah, it doesn't matter. I'm just dead. Hey! That's well, a big creature. I could have probed, but I would have found a brainstorm and not a uh, thing. So, we're in a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. All right. Brainstorm. Results. I don't think I'm ever going to have time to cast Painful Truth. We're going to throw that one back. I'm going to fetch. This game is basically over. I think I probably have about a 1% chance to win. Um, Zero if I just never activate my Bristlebrand. I do have Jason, my dog. Oh. All right, activate it. Activate it. <laughs> activate it. You can only activate it twice. Attack. Uh, I see what this is. All right, so odds are, I mean, he did just brainstorm, so he could have Force of Will now. So not worth fighting. Sure. 14. Activate. Activate. <laughs> Alright. We will activate. Seven. Go seven. Three. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Alright. Attack. Yep. Fourteen to uh to twelve. twelve. Yep. And I will play. Hmm. I'm going to brainstorm main phase. One, two, three. And what will I never be casting? I'm going to I'm going to want that. I'm going to want this. Um I'm going to want this. 
Probably this. Just pick two at random. This. Come on. <laughs> well, I'm also going to have to discard. Sure. So I'm just like figuring out my... All right. So... Don't forget you get to play a land. I know. Seven. We're going to want this. And this is mostly what I want. So... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll put back these. Uh, we'll play this. And do I want to cast anything else? Yeah, I'm going to go to 13. Since I have a Volcanic, I'll get another one. Since I don't think this game is going to come down to Wastelands. True. Ponder. Three. Shuffle. Draw. And so now we're going to keep these. And these seem like the best keeps, and move to discard. Oh. Um. There results. All right. Um. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be casting this death right shaman. And I have to draw this anyway. You can discard. Yep. Draw. Fetch. Painful truth? God, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to attack. All right, eight. Play a Pyromancer. That resolves. Uh, we'll play a Jataxian Probe for two life. Trigger. Get a burrow. Two pierce. Sneak. Force. M. Ponder. Two, three, four, five, six. And a city. Alright, draw a card. Go. Um. So nine still doesn't really matter, so I'll just... I can go for this. Sneak attack. All right, force pitch. Trigger. You go to nine. Huh? Is that... Oh, yeah, I should be at eight, because I fetched. Oh, eight? Yeah, okay. I'm dead then. Then you have another force. You have a pitch... Yeah, you have a pierce anyway, so... But I can't activate the same turn. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah, but since but I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm one... Sh I, yeah, I... Yep. Yeah, so I go to seven, then I just get attacked to death. That's, I probably messed that up. I might have had a small shot. I guess you can just hold back and not attack, and then have yeah, to... Yeah, I screwed up, too. I should have kept Brainstorm over Ponder, because I could have just end a turn Brainstorm. Hit another force or something. All right, we're on the play here for game two. Uh, my hand is fine, again, with the, the wheel spinning. We definitely want to find uh, something a little proactive... You know, a discard spell, a death right shaman, something like that. We have a brainstorm probe and a ponder, so let's let's hope we find something. Well, uh, it's going to take me two turns to get to the two sneak attacks in my hand. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> in my turn. All right. Uh, no, we're going to ponder first. All so. Right. <laughs> Actually, in case so, the I have a choice here. If I want to fetch. Volcanic Island, and then next turn I can maybe brainstorm into Deathrite and cast it off on Underground Sea that I fetch. Uh, but in the... Yeah, I guess I, so I should just start with the... I think it's always better to start with Volcanic. 
After board, that could change. Come on. I got so many things. I even have probe. You're not going to probe me. Might. I'm not. All right, top three. All right, well, we found Nutso, so. Nutso? Close enough. That's bad. Go. All right, island. Ponder. It resolves. All right, one, two, three. Um, yeah, this is worth keeping. Seventeen trigger. Oh wait, no, I have to do it the opposite order. I have to do it in the opposite order. Okay. It's very important you to do. You want to force it. this? Um sorry. Going a little fast. No, I Yeah, I should <laughs> this is how I was supposed to go out. Sure. All right, uh, probe you, okay. 17. Okay, so force, show and tell, sneak attack, uh, omni, intuition, pedal. What am I missing? Force, show and tell, sneak attack, omni, intuition, pedal, and gristle. All right, draw a card. Go. Cash show and tell. I'll force it, pitch energy, taxi, and probe, and trigger. That. I'll force pitching omnish. I did a 16. She almost 100% pitch intuition, I yeah. think. Alright, so you go to 18. Yeah. And I'll force pitch a brainstorm. No! Go to 15. What? You can't just turn to me two games in a row with no. no. Yeah, so. No, that's why I have to. I have to. I have to do this one, because this will win the game anyway. Sure. Okay. So if you fetch twice and you force, so you should be at 17. I've fetched once and probed once and double force, so I should be at 15. All right, your turn. And nope. if I draw a land, I can painful truth. Oh no. Toit? No! <laughs> <laughs> so, 14, then I'm going to go to 11. Uh, I think I actually want to get a Badlands. The Tropical Island is not going to do anything, and yeah, I may actually end up too. needing a... No, I mean, if you get Wasteland, you can't possibly win. That is true. All right, so I'm at 11. I'll draw three. And 12. Wreck you. Go. Sure. All right. Draw show and tell two mana land. Brain. Oh yeah. Show and tell two mana land. That'd be a nice one. Go. All right. Well, attack. Take six. What six? Now, if I had to guess, he kept intuition in hand. Is planning on casting intuition now. So you have a cabal we'll therapy. Cabal therapy trigger. Would you like to respond? No. I'll name intuition. All right. I'll flash it back. Sack mate. Okay, I'll name Gristlebrand. <laughs> <laughs> So even though he cast the Brainstorm, it was pretty obvious what he had to keep in hand there. Yeah. All right, well, let's get to sideboarding and talk about that. So over here, I'm going to be cutting the whole Omniscience package since uh, in this matchup where Todd is going to have Cabal Therapies and Counter Spells, when I'm attacked by so many angles, I don't want multiple angles in my own deck. I just want to be clean, straightforward, have redundancy in what I'm trying to accomplish. And, uh, and I'm replacing this... Uh, part of the deck with Blood Moons. And now Blood Moon is uh, is one of those fun versus video cards where uh, it creates a win percentage for a deck, and that is very important in the format. 
but is not what people come to watch. But when it happens, it happens. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I actually, those are my favorite games that we play in versus videos because I just get to go get lunch faster. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I, I think Blood Moon is an important part of both modern and legacy. And while they don't create... going to keep impulse in. I think that card's fine in this match. Yeah, the card's definitely fine. Uh, while, while Blood Moon is not exactly a fun card, it, it is important to remember that there are drawbacks to not playing any basic lands in your deck. Yeah. And Jerry is a, a huge advocate of playing zero basic lands in three and four color decks because, you know, the, the odds of you running into a Blood Moon is not super high, uh, to start with. And a lot of times people actually end up fetching basics as their first land or two. And then ultimately Wasteland actually does more damage to them because it shuts them completely off of a color. Yeah. Whereas if you were fetching up like dual land, dual land, dual land, a Wasteland's very rarely going to lock you off of one of your colors. Yeah. It just locks you off of a converted mana cost. Right. Uh, so for my side of sideboarding, uh, the Dot Block Edict I think is very uh, hit or miss. I think that if, if Brad ever goes turn two show and tell, put in Naked Emrakul... It's the only, you know, it's it's very rare that I'm going to have a way to deal with it, and this gives me, like, a backdoor out, and I, I like that, as well as if he goes sneak attack, I also have the backdoor out of being able to kill an Emrakul. Now, it can technically kill Gristlebrand, but that's pretty hard, and usually Brad's going to draw somewhere around 7, maybe 14 cards, and be able to find a, a, a way to stop that. But if it's just an Emrakul, then having something like Diablock Edict is, is huge. Uh, two copies of Pyroblast to help fight the card show and tell, but it's also pretty good against uh, his Force of Wills trying to protect as well as, uh, you know, the, the front half of his deck does have these Cunning Wishes, Intuition, Omniscience. So Power Blast is, is pretty good in, in a lot of those situations, but, uh, I, you know, him cutting a bunch of blue cards is whatever. But also stopping Brainstorm is just insane. Uh, invasive Surgery, stop Show and Tell for one mana. It's pretty big. Uh, Cabal Therapy number four coming in uh, to help fight all of his uh, various combo elements. Boarding out just some removal spells, Dismember and Bolt are, are pretty bad in the matchup. Some people may argue for leaving in Bolt because it may be the last few points of damage you need uh, if your opponent is trying to draw some cards with Gristlebrand or if they like Hail Mary at three life when, and show and tell Gristlebrand into play or something, you may just be able to bolt them to death. But you also might they might have Gristlebrand in play because you have a bolt in your hand. Right, right. So, all right, we're going to get rid of those. All right, well, my hand looks uh, fine. It's uh, no turn one Blood Moon, or is it? I hope not. Uh, my side, uh, we have a, a bit of a sketchy one, but I think this one's definitely keepable. Uh, do note that uh, after we talked about our sideboarding, I did actually make one more change. I was convinced to bring in the two copies of Pithy Needle over the two copies of Baleful Strix. I wanted to keep my blue count high for Force of Will, but I think it's also important to be able to shut down a sneak attack off of, if, if he puts it into play off a of show and tell, I can put in a Pith Needle, see what he's putting in. If it's a Gristle Brand, he's low on cards, I can name that. If he puts and sneak attack, I can name that. I can also just name Scalding Tarn sometimes and just get them. <laughs> sure. Fluster Storm. Fluster, Brainstorm X2, Sneak, City, and Delta. All right, we'll draw. All right, fetch. Death right, go. That's 17. Brainstorm. Resolves. Just those. All right. Uh, go. All right, so he played the fetch land here, and he played the one we knew about, so we can scratch that off our list. I'm going to draw a card, and then we're going to talk about this very particular situation. So since he played the fetch land, that means there's a very high probability that he's shuffling those cards away, which means that it's unlikely he put his sneak attack back on top. He wants to obviously try to protect it, and he may be trying to bait me by leaving just one card on top and not really wanting to shuffle away anything. So we have to try to deduce whether he drew some cards off of the brainstorm that are not exactly desirable. Uh, he needs lands, though. So he needs, if he needs lands and big creatures and things like that, there is actually a reasonable chance that this is a sneak attack on top. And if we do therapy him, we need to name something else. 
All right, we'll start with therapy, target you. And now we can see how he reacts and then try to make a decision after that. Yep. Now we also could have probed him first, but uh, that would have turned his fluster storm uh, on to counter the therapy. That's also pretty important to note. Mm, I'm okay with the. Am I okay with the wasteland right now? Yeah, I'm okay with it. Yeah, I mean, if you still have the city, which I assume you do. All right. Does this result? Uh, I believe it does. Yes. All right. So now we get to play a little game of cat and mouse. So Brad's not going to tell you guys why he's putting things on top that he's doing. I'm just going to try to make my best guess at what he's keeping. Unfortunately, probe is not an instant. Because after his brainstorm resolves, I could just probe him at instant speed. All right. All right. All right. So he's played both the brainstorms we know about. If I had to guess, the fuzzle. Maybe actually, I'm. No, sure. Don't 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 talk anything about it. Just figure out what you're going to do, and then tell me when when it's my turn to to act. Yeah, I think my hand, I just have to do that. All right, so the possible combinations of cards here that, that Brad could put it back on top. Uh, I think he probably wants to protect the sneak, uh, sneak attack. The only reason for him to keep, uh, he has no reason to keep the sneak attack in his hand at all because he could next turn just go City Traders cast it. Now, if his other two cards in hand that I don't know about, or some number of the two cards in hand I don't know about, are Lotus Petal and a Threat, then he actually can just sneak attack and hit me next turn if I don't have a Force of Will, a Spell Pierce, a Daze, or something like that. Uh, alternatively, he could go... Uh, two mana land, show and tell, put in the sneak attack, activate the sneak attack. So we have to figure out the best card to name to stop all of those combinations. And so I'm going to mark off sneak attack as a card that I'm not naming. Uh, you could be safe and just name Flusterstorm and then use the flashback on Death Rush Shaman, but I really don't want to have to use the flashback right now. Um, so I think... The problem is if I name Gristlebrand or Immercool, it's like a 50-50. But if I just name Show and Tell, that actually means he has to have Lotus Petal. And if he doesn't have Show and Tell and does have Lotus Petal, and he's going to hit me next turn, then I can just do this. So I'm going to name Show and Tell. All right, so it's just a bunch of nothings. So it's probably Big Guy, <laughs> big guy Show and Tell on top. I didn't mean to talk, you know. No, that, no, no, I know what you mean. But, like, no, I was just, just break down all my, all my brainstorms. All right, so he definitely has a sneak attack on top. That probably means actually the bottom card is actually just a garbage card that he's going to shuffle away. So we're going to cycle some of these Jataxian probes and try to uh, find a Force of Will, I think. Maybe even play a Ponder. So we'll go to 15, draw. Oh, wow, that was great. Did you hit a Young Peasy? Yep, and I have another probe in hand too. Yeah. So uh, we'll exile your Delta, I guess. Uh, so this is going to put me at 14 from the fetch, I believe. All right, we'll play another probe, get a guy. Uh, I didn't write down your lands. I don't know if it matters Doesn't too much. Matter. Uh, but it was just Flusterstorm Petal? Yeah, one of my spells. Okay. All right, so draw off of the probe. Did I do that yet? I don't think so. I rarely draw before I look at their hand. All right, we're going to flash back therapy I think and just take the fluster storm since he can't sneak attack plus hit me next turn so no nope. my turn yep yep go and that also lets him play around days which I did not consider so maybe I should if I named the lotus petal we would have been a little bit better off but not by a lot well now we're kind of bottlenecked into countering every uh, dig spell he could draw from now on. I think I still want to just go for maybe the Jace and hope for the best. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be... You can also bait uh, me, right? Oh, wow, That's yeah. That's insane, yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, you. But you know the top card, right? Yeah, oh, but, but it could be. Yeah, a creature. could be a creature, and you did that. Okay, that's actually really smart. <laughs> One, two, three. See, I'm going way over the top of my own head. Two, yeah. four, six, seven, eight, nine. So I should be at eleven from all this pain. Uh, walks all one of my lands. Guess this Jace. It stays on top. <laughs> okay, sure. And then uh, attack for three. Yeah. I guess that's a little more important than uh, to play around days. Maybe yeah. not though. I feel like you. Oh, I guess if I was able to counter that one, you wanted to have a backup. So that yeah. makes a little bit of sense. Because my hand was so bad. All right, no reason to therapy other than to make a creature. Uh, if I fate seal him and leave on top, he's going to use it as fetch land. But I think he has a good string, so it's, we'll just try to kill him in a short amount of time. So we'll brainstorm. Interesting. Oh, we hit the joker. GG. Hit, hit the needle? Yep. Uh, needle, sneak yep. attack. Dead. Land. <laughs> Gross. Fort, ah! fort, force that thing. Ah! Was that the next one? Yes. <laughs> Uh, and you didn't fade sill. Oh, that's so gross. Oh. What happens if I fade sill there and leave it on top? I 100% keep it. <laughs> just just to get you, because you're like, yeah. you're just going to shuffle. And I'm like, yeah, I was just going to keep it, even if it's a trick. All right. Uh, I guess uh, we know my plan. Sure. Uh, my hand, uh, it's a little mana heavy, but I think it's okay. Definitely on the draw, it's, it's okay to keep this. So. I also want to know, what is this? Yeah, I don't know, man. People always put them out on the deck. Yeah. I don't get it. I don't get it either. Dude, sometimes you just got to play around wasteland. Blood Moon. Yeah. All right. Uh, we are going to just play this and say go. Thinking that that might be you have your invasive surgery. Uh, could mean a lot of things. Could mean mostly that, right? You, oh, it could be pyroblast too. Yeah, just gonna draw. Fitch, death rate. I will brainstorm. Okay, resolves. One, two, three. I know I'm not talking a whole lot right now. Not either. Yeah, the, the these turns are very important for sculpting and for keeping a lot of information hidden. Uh, once we get to a point where we start throwing spells at each other, or one of us gets some breathing room, I'll go pretty deep into my opener and why, de why I'm doing what I'm doing. For now, please be content yeah. Watch, watching Brad try to learn how to brainstorm. <laughs> to learn how to brainstorm? Well... Well, you forgot. You got to relearn. All right. So. I almost feel like this is the appropriate play, even though his death rate's going to be on for a while, which kind of sucks. Going to shut off your dick through time. Oh, this is a video filmed six months ago? I just feel like I'm, I'm, I'm so confident that this card is not going to be used, and I feel like he's got... A thing, and I want to go a little bit deeper, so I somewhat want to put this back, and maybe just this. All right, those are gonna go back. Untap, fetch. Sure. Eighteen to nineteen. I can go get your mountain and be safe from wasteland. <laughs> <laughs> or you can get your island.
draw for turn. No. All right. Hmm. All right. I'll force pitch in ponder. I don't have it. Oh wow! All right, so. So all right, so I'm gonna deconstruct the that's that's dead. Uh, oh. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna deconstruct the first few turns <laughs> real quick since nothing really has gone on. Um, by playing the volcanic island and not casting ponder or doing anything, I wanted to use force with ponder and save uh, my Jace. Now it's become a dead card. I don't think I can possibly win through a dead uh, blood moon. I can maybe cast a second death right. Two more, two or three more spells right because there's only yeah. three. I can. Obviously, oh, yeah. play like a young pyromancer or something, right? Um, but for the most part, I'm I'm basically locked out of of casting more than two or three relevant spells. So, uh, the reason why I didn't play that is because of the threat of power blast or even the threat of, uh, you know, something like that, like power blast or what was the other card you you mentioned that I f I'm forgetting about? Invasive surgery. Invasive surgery. Yes. If either of those cards could prevent Brad from just casting a show and tell on turn two, turn three, while also letting me save the ponder for my force of will, and by leading with this o over, uh, you know, any of my other lands, I think that maybe scared him a little bit, but it did, uh, it did not work exactly. Dang it! In my favor. So I don't have things to cast. So I'll just attack. Yeah, Seventeen. Here go. We really need to draw a young pyromancer like right now. I think I just ponder here. Two, three. We can't just give him the, the death right beats. Not opposed. So this Jace is basically a dead card now. Mm -hmm. I probably should have pitched the Jace over the ponder because of that. Because if the this blood moon the result, ability, right? Yes. Alright, go. It's just making sure. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I usually don't play Blood Moon in my lists. All right. I'm just going to play this and attack. Yeah. Uh, 16. Here you go. Sneak attack. Okay. And we're cool. Mm, you win. Trigger. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to come back with your mountains. All right, final game. I'm on the play here, and my hand doesn't look too bad. We don't have a ton of disruption, but we got a little speed, and we got a little trickiness, so I'll take it. All right, uh, I think that I have to keep this, and I'm all in, and it kind of sucks, but whatever. Go. One of these days I'll draw a days. Get it? I feel... How hungry <laughs> are you? What? I'm, I'm, I'm... Are you very hungry? I don't know what that means. I don't. <laughs> Are you trying to see if you want to turn one Blood Moon or not? Just turn one Blood Moon. What's the worst thing can happen? You can counter it. Yeah, but I also have to force, and all you lose is like a Lotus Petal. I think you have a counter spell. I don't have a counter spell. Just play it. You don't have a counter I'm hungry. Let's go. You really don't have a counter spell? I swear to God, I don't have a counter spell. Yeah, your, your City of Treasure is still in play there, bro. Not for long. <laughs> sure. All right. F 14 or 13. Attack. 13, 20. All right, 13. I was thinking of just playing defense grid on turn one. That would have been tight. How many more cards are you going to draw? Uh, you want to go to six life and see what happens? Not really. <laughs> what? Uh, I th think I'm satisfied with this. Um, three, four, five, six, seven. Emrakul, Gristlebrand, Force, Blue Card, Probably Red Source. That. Probably, oh, he probably has that card in his hand. I thought you were just going to 15 me. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> like, make me sack my two things. I was like, ah! 
That's worse, but all right, this from the way this you were looking, how hungry are you? Go. All right, this can go. All right. Uh, and then these all can go. This is so many lands for you. Sure, man. All right. So you're, you're at 13, you only use it one time, or you use, use it twice. Yeah, I'm at 13. You don't want to go six. Should I? I have no, it depends on how bad your hand is. Or how good your hand is. Wait, this, right. hand, this, is this card even good against you in this game? Is this going to be relevant? All right, too late. All right, fine. Use your 14 cards. I'm not giving you any takes, these backsies. All right, Pyromancer. All right, you're at 12. Yep. Probe you. So we got Grizzle, Moon, Delta, Tarn, Show. All right, draw. Go. Oh, yeah, yeah, just any land doesn't matter. Okay. Two colorless. Fetch. What? What? How'd you peel that one? Well, I just literally did. That's not. <laughs> I had a whole plan and everything. Did you really have a plan? Yes, I was gonna invasive surgery your show and tell. If you land in Blood Moon, I could still die ball heat your creature next turn. And if you just hit me with Gristle Brand and drew seven cards, then I probably couldn't win. Yeah, well, that was what I was going to do. Okay. 100%. Well, fine. <laughs> All right. Negative four. Go. All right. Shuffle. You don't have any permanents. You didn't say trigger. <laughs> That's true. All right. You win. <laughs> I lose two do state based effects. <laughs> Well, I have to say that I missed Our casting show and tell in sneak attack. No? Okay. No, so I think ga game five really just exemplifies how powerful the deck can be at, <laughs> if you are willing to just go for it. Well, especially because this was a, a very poetic moment that could have potentially, like, seemed staged since that is the identical opener I had against BBD. At the invitation on the top four. Now, if you if you want a good video you haven't seen, no, BBD versus Brad, torture. game five semifinals oh invitational. God. All you gotta do is Google that. The video's up. It's our just our game five. It is wonderful. Maybe we could link it. Can we link that? No. Please. No, don't. Oh, uh, it's so good. But anyway, they know how to use Google. My open my opening was three Lotus Petals, a City Traders sneak attack with Crystal Run, and he had the Force. And then I still come back to win the game. Come back. Yeah. Well, it's because I was I never left. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, so this matchup I think is is pretty close. I mean, the three two I think it's fairly common, and I would have been sur not been surprised if it was the other way. Yeah. Um, no, Blood Moon is is definitely a kick in the teeth for any sort of three or four color deck that doesn't have any basic lands. And Brad's deck playing three of them just means that that's another thing I have to deal with. Uh, I would like to see some variations of this deck incorporate. Uh, Hydroblast on a t on top of Pyroblast in the sideboard, just because of how good it is against decks that play like Price of Progress, or uh, you know, th there's there's a lot of red permanents that just need need handling. Not too many, but no, but sneak and sneak attack, Blood Moon. These are cards that you're afraid of in yeah. this deck, and especially I mean, Burn's also a pretty bad matchup too. So yeah. you could hedge, play one or two, and I think you should be fine. I feel like the the sideboard had a little bit of chaff in it. Yeah, I but can, this is also that. Jerry's first rough rough draft. With yeah. the deck. So top 16 performance. And he had quite feels a few fun ups. True. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, Sneak and Show is great. It's the best deck in the format. Uh, <laughs> should win every single tournament. Is the Jund of Legacy for sure. Jund's not even the Jund. Yeah, of I was going to say Jund. Isn't Jund the Jund of Legacy? No. 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 Sneak and Show I, think, is the I actually Jund of think Lands is the Jund of Legacy. It is. Okay. Yeah. Sneak and Show is great. Uh, I just enjoy playing it all the time. It'll probably win Wooster this weekend. Maybe. I'm pretty sure it will. Well, but maybe anyway, if you were going and you were playing. That is true. Actually, you know who you know what deck and who I think is gonna win the Legacy Open? Mm. I think 
that no Walker is going to win with his Grixis Delver deck. I would not again. take that bet. <laughs> again. I would not bet against Noah Walker. Yeah, he top eight the Grand Prix, too. Just a monster. It is. He's it's so the, good with that deck. It is unbelievable. Yeah. And he's so young. Mm. But anyway, thank you for watching, everyone. Join us this weekend when we are going to be in Wusta. SCG Live Tour is heading that way. Forgot who the commentators are, but there will be two of them. They're great. They're so, both awesome. I would guess Matthias and Overturf would be my guess. Just They're the because, modern guys. Well, Matthias is is like a legacy modern guy, I think. Sure. Who knows? Who cares? Anyway, guys, <laughs> thanks for watching the Verse series on SarcyGames.com. For Brad Nelson, I'm Todd Anderson, and we'll see you next week with all our stuff. And thanks. And bye.